Washing your hands might be a good way to keep you from getting sick, but in some cases, dirt can do you good. Let's hear some research on it. Researchers found that people living in less cleanly regions of the world develop far less autoimmune diseases. For example, people living in Thailand are 10 times less likely to develop inflammatory bowel disease than people living in Finland, one of the richest countries in the world with high sanitary standards. Thai people are also 100 times less likely to develop the autoimmune disease type 1 diabetes. And if this is not already enough, people living in Thailand have a 10 times lower risk to develop allergies. So let's all move to Thailand, right? Well, there are some good reasons to move there. It's a beautiful country and everything. However, in Thailand, you are also much more likely to catch infectious diseases of any kind. What sounds a little bit like a trade-off between autoimmune diseases and infectious diseases could be exactly this, a trade-off. Research over the last years has shown a strong connection between extreme hygiene and autoimmune diseases, which culminated into the proposal of the hygiene hypothesis. A rather extreme comparison is done by a French scientist who showed that while the incidence of infectious diseases went down, the frequency of autoimmune diseases went through the roof. By now you might be thinking like, what the hell is he talking about? Isn't it a good thing that we have eradicated most infectious diseases in the western world? Yes, it definitely is. I've worked with a bacterium that causes tuberculosis, and you don't want to have it. Ever. While the comparison of infectious diseases and autoimmune diseases is absolutely valid, it's pretty extreme. You don't have to catch a severe infection to not develop an autoimmune disease. However, spending your life in an almost sterile bubble brings a disadvantage that your immune system lacks education. In his TED talk, Moises Valassis Manhoff, proposes that evolution turns the unavoidable into the necessary and compares being surrounded by microorganisms to gravity. Our body that evolved under the constant pull of gravity ends up requiring gravity to stay healthy. And we didn't fully appreciate this until we escaped Earth's gravitational pull. We're now learning something very similar about the immune system. The immune system needs its version of gravity. And in this case, gravity consists of things we've traditionally thought of as, as evil, uh, microbes, some microbes, certain parasites. Our bodies have evolved, being surrounded by microorganisms. And suddenly we started to sterilize our food, sanitize our home. And on top of this, we swallow antibiotics every other year, which literally acts like an atomic bomb on our gut bacteria. There's a lot of research out there supporting the theory that microbes educate our immune system. For instance, if you're living on a farm, you're three times less likely to develop hay fever. And the same can be said if you had a pet as a kid. Both living on a farm and having a pet will expose you to much more microbes than let's say living in a pet-free apartment in the city. It goes much further than simple allergies. As an example, this paper found that breastfeeding is associated with a lower risk to develop multiple sclerosis. Another paper found that countries that have lower hygiene standards have also a lower risk to develop Alzheimer's disease. In this figure you can see that towards the left end of your screen, those are the countries in whom individuals have high levels of parasites, which is an indication for less hygiene. But it doesn't necessarily mean that these parasites make you sick, by the way. Towards the top is the increasing prevalence of Alzheimer's disease. And you can see that those countries who have higher incidence of parasites have a lower prevalence of Alzheimer's disease. I have another extreme example. There are clinical trials that show how parasitic worm can improve the symptoms of the devastating autoimmune diseases, inflammatory bowel disease and multiple sclerosis. They do this by suppressing the immune system, which is exactly what the drugs do that are prescribed against these diseases. But just in case you're eating right now, I won't elaborate on these studies. Does this mean we should go back to the good old times where we got killed by microbes and not by our own immune system? No, of course not. This video's purpose is not to make you wish you have a warmer tuberculosis infection. However, what I'm getting at is that we haven't just eliminated infectious microbes, but we have also reduced the beneficial ones. Babies born by C-section, not being breastfed, and multiple courses of antibiotics early in life can leave your microbiome diversity diminished. And slowly, we get a fairly good understanding on how our microbiome educates our immune system, especially early in life. Even if you're already suffering from autoimmune disease, it might not be too late to do something against it. 
I'm not a medical doctor and whatever you do, you should talk to your doctor first. However, there's some promising research out there showing that resetting the microbiome can do miracles to our health. If you're interested in these studies, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next week. All studies I refer to today can be found in the description. And as always, thank you for watching.